was breathing but not alive. Do you remember that? All my failures I tried Woo. to hide. It was my tomb till I met you.
Heavenly Father, we thank you. It's just so good to be in your house today. Our hearts are glad that your people are able to, to gather and worship you in one roof. And indeed, Lord, our relationship with your Son, Jesus Christ, and with you. That is where we live and move and have our being. And it's just so good to seek you early, first thing in the morning. And thank you for allowing us to be gathered once again for the second Sunday of this year as your children, as your called out ones here in this 
city. You have called us out of darkness. You've given us a purpose, and that is to know you and to make you known. That is to love you, to love the people around us, and to make multiplying disciples. So, Father, our prayer today, as we have come, is that you will touch our hearts in a very special way through the messages of the songs, through your word, and through the fellowship. Thank you for healing us from spiritual, emotional, even physical diseases. We thank you that you are the God who is able, the God who is mighty, the God who is the God of power, who has authority over sin, death, hell, even any sicknesses. And we have come to worship you, to give you honor, to give you glory. There are yet so many things that we do not understand with what's happening around us, but we know that we can entrust our lives to you. We know that we need not to fear about the future because you are already there. You are ordering our steps and you make it sure that we will not fall away or slip. And so, Father, we thank you for your daily sufficient grace for us. Thank you for protecting us, preserving our families. Thank you for providing our needs. And even, Lord, that we are just able to, to, to worship you here in this place. I also would like to, to, to ask and pray for those who are watching online. Father, be with them as well, wherever they are right now. Touch them. Bless them as well. And also, Father, we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we rebuke, we reject any work, any presence, any attempt of the enemy to disrupt us, to distract us. Allow us, Father, to experience your, your, your presence in our midst because you are here. You are here in our midst. We honor you. We glorify you. Holy Spirit, teach us all things. Cause us to grow through your word. And Father, bless us and bless us indeed. We are excited and we are ready. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Good morning, everyone. In 1 Corinthians 16, verse 2, if you have your Bibles with you, you can read it with me. It says here, On the first day of every week, each of you is to put something aside and store it up as he may prosper so that there will be no collecting when I come. Now, Paul is talking here to the Christians in the New Testament church. And he is encouraging them how God is faithful. If God has been faithful to you last year, truly, God will be faithful to you even this year. He is not a cosmic killjoy in giving us this pandemic. But actually, He is pleased to bless us and provide all our needs. So in return, this should be something that as a reflection of God's faithfulness, mercy, and grace to us, He has kept us safe, given us good health, and even we are here in church worshiping God. So may it be a reflection that as God has prospered, as God has been faithful to you, may you give also with a heart, with joy, and with a heart of generosity for the church and for, the, for God's work. So may it be a reminder for us that this can be also a way of worship to us as we give to the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, we are, we are always grateful, Lord, of your mercy, your grace your sufficiency in everything that we do, in everything that we have. Lord, you always abound in love, in faithfulness. And Lord, indeed, there is, there are a lot of things that can hinder us in acknowledging, Lord, your goodness. Especially, Lord, last year, even continuing this year, 
Lord, help us. Help us. Indeed, this is really a training of our faith, a training, Lord, of our hearts of worship. That, Lord, even if we lack, if we lack material things, even, Lord, if we are going through trials and circumstances, Lord, this should be a practice, Lord, of still worshiping you in spirit and in truth. Still, Lord, trusting in you in whatever circumstance that may come to us. And Lord, even giving generously to your work and even, Lord, to others. May this be a reminder, Lord, that you have never stopped loving us, giving us all we need, protecting us. And Lord, we can testify even this year, even today, we are here in church and worshiping you. So, Lord, may we have a heart of worship even as we give. Lord, you do not count how much we give, but, Lord, you, you count what is in our hearts. And may it be pleasing to you, whatever it may be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hello everyone, good morning. And I'm so glad to hear, I mean to see, uh, I thought, new faces. So um, I would like to apologize for not being able to recognize some of you, no, as some of you are wearing masks. I mean, mo all of you, you know, in front of me are wearing masks, but I would like to welcome each one of you. Welcome to GCF Iloilo. Good morning. And I would like you to turn to your neighbors and greet them. Good morning. It's good to be back in the church. Welcome to GCF. See ya. Oh, totoo, hanggang ngayon, I cannot recognize some of you. But if you have come for the first time, before I am going to welcome you, and all of you, bef dapat ngay, before I have welcomed you, I should have checked and asked if you signed up, no? in the online sign-up sheet or form. Okay, we highly encourage, please, we highly encourage that you sign up first in our um, Facebook page or in our website. Please check, meron na tayong website, please check our gcfilulilu.com and uh, please sign up there, no? Um, for, because we are strictly following health protocols, okay? So we would like to make sure that you are safe and then the staff are also safe, okay? No? And kasi ito, guys, please, um, just hear me here. We do not know. There's always uncertainty as to when can we gather physically. Hindi natin alam kung hanggang kailan tayo makakapag-gather physically. No? Uh, nasanay na tayo. Anytime, bigla na lang na mag-shift, mag-change yung health protocols. No? So ngayon, we are under MGCQ. That's why 50% of the population of this church um, are able to gather. Okay? So please. And if you, are, if you have come for the first time, I hope you sign up kayo and I would like to welcome you. No? I'm not going to embarrass you to raise up your hand or stand up. But if ever there's a, a guest here, thank you for um, committing to uh, visit us here in GCF. Okay? And also to you guys, watching this 5 p.m. online service. No? Uh, thank you for joining us again. You are a part of the family. No? This is, uh, we, uh, today is January 10, and you're watching 5 p.m., although this is the 10 a.m. service, but I still would like to welcome each one of you. Those of you who are watching abroad, Singapore, um, we have a viewer from uh, Paris, France, um, Hong Kong, from Manila, Cebu, uh, Digaspi, my family there, our uh, faith family in Himamayalan City, Roa City, and Bacolod City. You are very welcome. Good morning. And hopefully, you guys, um, hopefully we would be able to do this 
simultaneously na. So we're, we, we still lack uh, people, no? Kulang tayo ng tao. And we're still trying to figure out the technology gaps here. But uh, certainly, we're doing this live stream. So wala nang uh, replay na lang talaga sa hapon. But uh, 10 a.m. would be done live stream. But for now, we're trying to figure things out. Kulang tayo ng tao. And please continue to pray about that. And if you are watching online, and kayo guys na naandito in this church hall, I am really encouraging you, please encourage your, your friends, your relatives to come to church because I would really would like you to take advantage of this opportunity that we are able to gather. Kasi we do not know. We do not know. Okay, habang merong chance to be in the church, um, be in the church. Okay? So, yun. Thank you. Again, I am Pastor Mark. Welcome to GCF Iloilo. I would like, before we begin, I would like you to Open your Bibles with me if you have a copy, a Johnny copy of the Bible or a hard copy. I would like you to um, open your Bibles in Mark chapter 7 because we are continuing with our sermon series in Mark, in the Gospel of Mark. No? Snapshots, the miracles of Jesus in the book, in the Gospel of Mark. I'm encouraging you to um, read in advance. No? Nasa, book of, nasa Gospel of Mark tayo. May I request everyone to please stand up? Uh, as we give respect, reverence to the Word of God, we will be reading from Mark chapter 7, verses 31 to 37. Okay? This is scripture reading time, the public reading of God's Word. This is God's Word. This is God's truth. We will read. I will read from verse 31. Basahin on verse 32. Okay? And then responsive reading. All together in verse 37. We are in Mark chapter 7, verse 31 up until 37. Okay? Shall we begin? The Word of God says, Mark 7, 31, Then he returned from the, re the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. Thirty-three, and taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his fingers into his ears and after spitting, touched his tongue. Ephata, that is be open. And his ears were open. His tongue was released and he spoke plainly. Together, and they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. May the Lord bless the reading of His word. Father in heaven, this is the time where we are being exposed to the preaching, the teaching of your pure word. We only ask that you will speak to us in your Still small voice, comfort our hearts, instruct us, rebuke us, and mature our faith. Lord, we want this year to become a year of character development. This year might not be comfortable for us. This year presents and might present a new set of adversity, hardships, and setbacks. But Lord, our desire is to grow in Christ-likeness character. And we, you are going to use your word. Holy Spirit, speak to us now. Use your servant, hide him behind your cross, equip us, edify us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Please take your seats. We are continuing in our sermon series in the Gospel of Mark. Okay? As I have said in the early sermons regarding this Gospel, uh, Mark wrote this Gospel somewhere in Rome and the Apostle Peter was... Um, was his mentor. Now, most of the contents of the writing of writings of Mark in this gospel was taken, siguro, out from the preachings of Peter, from the narratives of the apostle Peter. And this was the first gospel that was ever written and was read to the church, the believers, sa Rome. And this is very significant. Yung gospel na to, kasi the Christians were being persecuted by Emperor Nero. I said there was a huge fire in Rome, and then ang 
parang the one that the, the people that are being blamed although some some historians would tell us na yun ay kapabayaan ni Nero so wala siyang ma-blame no almost the entire city of Rome was on fire so nakita niya itong mga Christians no the the, the, the people who were uh, very aggressive into preaching teaching God's word studying his word so sila yung pinagbalingan and then this was the first gospel that really landed upon their ears. And this gospel, the gospel of Mark, Jesus was being presented here as the God who, is, who came down from heaven to serve, to seek and to serve, okay? To seek and to save that which was lost and even to give his life as a ransom for money. Kung merong Summary, ng buong Gospel of Mark, that's gonna be Mark chapter 10, verse 45. For the Son of Man came, no, not to be served, but to serve and to give His life as a ransom for many. So those are the two operative words sa Gospel of Mark. Sacrifice and service. He came to serve. He came to sacrifice His life for us. So as we, as we continue, I hope alam niyo yung background ng book na ito. And in our passage today, no, nagkaroon tayo ng ilang breaks, Christmas and the New Year sermon series breaks. But in our passage today, we will find Jesus and the disciples on a long journey. Okay? Jesus took the disciples into a very long journey. I'm going to explain why. And emphasize ko talaga yung very long journey. Because they were walking from Tyre and Sidon. Yung Sidon, that is the modern Lebanon. Okay? So basically, and doon sila sa Gentile. Uh, nations, country. Nasa labas na ng, ng Israel ito. Alright? Um, he ministered now, siguro, uh, a few months or maybe a year now, traveling from uh, yung north is the Galilee. Alright? And then yung uh, south was the Judea, kung nasaan yung temple sa Jerusalem. So he was already preaching teaching, healing people for almost a year now. And he went to be with the disciples into a very long journey by walking from Tyre and Sidon into the Decapolis. No? Decapolis, polis, city, deca, ten. So these were th- uh, ten, groups of ten uh, nations. These are pagan nations talaga. Okay? And I hope you would remember this, this place, De- Decapolis, as I have preached uh, about this in Mark chapter 5, the first visit to Jesus Christ to Decapolis. So this is the second. Now, this was a very long route on foot on a Gentile territory. This was very important journey because Jesus was with the disciples during this time and this was the, the, the moment that happened right after the disciples confessed Jesus as the Messiah. So kung sana pa, bagong-bagong na-save yung mga disciples. Di ba? Kailan nangyari yun? Yung, yung salvific confession of the disciples. Nangyari yun when Jesus calmed the storm and helped save the, uh, the disciples. Yun nga, we, we talk about that Peter walked into water. So this is very important kasi bagong-bago. So Jesus took them on a very long journey kasi that is how Jesus would teach his disciples. Very, very, ano, not boring. No, not boring. Talagang Jesus would take them right where the action is. Ganon dapat. Pag nasa growth groups, wag lang sa classroom, wag lang sa, sa, sa church. You do that. Um, you, you do ministry together. You, you do study together. You do study with other people. You make it exciting. So Jesus took the disciples you know, by walking and walking. He was trying to teach people. I mean, he, the, the, the very, his very own disciples. Okay? Now, this journey is part of their training and a little bit of a rest. Pahinga ni Jesus from the crowds. Uh, although hindi naman talaga totally pahinga, but this long journey of walking was a bit of a rest from the crowd. Kasi yung kasama lang ni Jesus all the while was the disciples. This is a story of how Jesus healed a man who was overlooked by the society. But this man got the attention of Jesus. We're gonna learn in a while. This is a unique encounter and a unique way of displaying God's power. 
Nakita na natin si Jesus Christ as to how He did miracles. He healed people of, of various sorts of diseases. Pero this was very unique. And alam niyo kung bakit unique? Because Mark was the only writer, gospel writer, who included this. Siya lang. Nowhere else to be found in the gospel of Luke, John, and Matthew. And there's a reason for that. I'm going to explain after the end of this sermon, before this sermon will end. Now, in the previous months, we have seen Jesus heal the leper, right? Tama ba? Were you there online when I was teaching that? We saw Jesus Christ heal the paralytic. He healed the man with a withered hand inside the synagogue. He healed a woman with an issue of blood, no? suffering from this issue of blood for 12 years. He fed the 5,000 people, and this was all inside a Jewish territory. Put that in the context, geographical context. This was done in a place where there is predominantly Jewish people. And Jewish people, they were, the, 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 they were God's covenant people, the chosen people of God. And although this is not the first miracle in the ministry of Jesus in this Gentile per, uh, territory, this is a unique way in the way as to how Jesus would heal a person. Very unique. Mag-iba. No? Iba siya. And I really like na Mark included this. No? Nagbigay siya ng colors sa entire uh, set of uh, miracles. Indeed, when we see and hear these miracles na ginawa ni Jesus in the past, and this one, a very unique one, talagang masasabi mo na, indeed, God has done all things well. Indeed, God has done all things perfect. Indeed, God has created things, new set of hands, new set of, of, of eyes, of ears, perfectly. New set of, of brand new uh, bread, no? na hindi grown from the ground, of food, na fish na hindi lumangoy. Di ba? He's really, talagang, he, his, his power and authority was on a great display, especially with this kind of miracle that we are about to witness. Okay? And uh, this account of Mark would tell us that Jesus intentionally moves, okay? intentionally moves in the territory of Gentiles for the second time around. Now, the question is, where is Jesus exactly and what is he doing here? It's a Gentile territory. Again, why did Jesus, we will also answer as a context, to set the context, is why did Jesus show miracles and not simply preach the gospel alone? Bakit kailangan pa talaga? Okay? Um, what are miracles for and why did he have to do it? I believe that its main purpose was, was to teach people that Jesus is all that they need. That indeed, he is the long-awaited, long-expected king but they are not just sure if Jesus is the kind of king who will save them from the Roman oppression. They were not sure that Jesus was really the long-expected, the long-awaited, prophesied king no, from the Old Testament. Most ailments, okay, Jesus cured, referred symbolically to man's sinfulness. Symbolically lahat yun. Kasi, let's put this into context, lahat ng, ng pinagaling ni Jesus Christ, tatanda din sila, hihina din sila, mamamatay din sila. So I believe that the concern, the purpose, was not just to heal a physical ailment. It was more than that. Okay? It was, yung, yung mga diseases na yun, handicapped, and ailments na yun, they were symbolic to man's sinfulness, and those diseases, handicapped, Oh, handicap are, are, are man's symbol of their inability to connect with God. For reconciliation, Jesus did the, heal, the healing of a leper. We saw leprosy as a symbolic, a symbol, as a symbol of sin. Incurable, sin. incurable disease, parehas ng sin. Incurable disease. If you have leprosy, you will be isolated. Ito, sin isolates us, destroys us, and others and is incurable without the Savior. Ganun yung mga parallels, yung symboli symbolism ng mga diseases na ito. The same is true with Jesus healing the blind, raising the dead back to life, as we are going to, to hear some in future sermons. 
Now, that was the first and the main purpose. It was, there was a, it, the miracles were a response to a need. People need to know that not only, the problem is not only the physical problem, but the spiritual. The second, I believe, no, the reason is to reveal the Messiah to the people. Kaya miracle kasi, kasi it should be done in a spectacular way, never seen before. It was like a phenomenon. Na talagang pag nakita mo talaga itong miracles na ito, mamamangha ka, you will be ama- amazed, just like ginawa ng mga tao dito sa Mark chapter 7, they were astonished. And you will be left in awe and believe that Jesus is powerful. Jesus is the authority. Okay? And that is also to authenticate the message and the messenger. That is what the miracles are for. Bakit may miracles? And I would like you to compare. Kasi sometimes we throw... I mean, we use that word oftenly, yung miracle. Ay, salamat. Dumating yung sweldo. Miracle. No? Ay, wow, gumaling yung aso ko. Miracle. Ay, buti na lang dumating yung 13th month. Miracle. It's a miracle. Di ba? Pero, uh, yeah, it's okay kung ganun yung gamit mo ng word ni miracle. Pero in the context ng Bible, miracle talaga is spectacular. Because God, the eternal, the almighty God is the one who did it. When you see Jesus doing the miracles, the message is the kingdom of God is at hand. Anjana, the kingdom of God is at hand and now is the time to believe. That is what the miracles are for. In the Old Testament, the prophets were preaching and crying and dying to preach this message about repentance and return to the Lord. But you know, we studied this in the book of Jeremiah. People did not listen. Kahit ando na mismo yung message, yung messenger, they even persecuted and killed many of God's prophets. As we have observed from previous chapters, Jesus and his mission, listen to this, has always been after the outsiders. Why? Because his very own, God's covenant people, received him not. So I really like, pag, gusto ko talaga, ito yung reason na gustong gusto kong pag-aralan yung miracles ni Jesus. Kasi nakafocus ito sa mga outsiders. Okay? Jesus' fame already drawn thousands of crowds, not only in the Judea in the south, not only in the Galilee in the north. No? These are, yung, yung, yung Judea is more, more prosperous, pero yung Galilee is more rural but also in the east towards the gentle regions of Decapolis. So we're going to learn that today in God's work, in God's word. We will learn today that God's ways of working in our lives may seem perplexing. Di mo na uunawaan. God's ways might seem unusual, but if we will completely trust in him, in his authority to heal, in his power to heal, he will heal us. I'm speaking primarily of a spiritual ailment, a spiritual disconnection, a spiritual disease. Okay? No matter how we think that we are forsaken, we are un- no matter how we feel that we are an unlikable person, no matter how you feel and think that you are being overlooked, hindi ka pinapansin ng mga tao, listen to this, God will meet your needs in an unexpected ways unexpected ways okay his will is always right and his ways are always perfect okay we entitled the sermon this morning as he does all things well when god when you are being given an introduction of jesus christ when your road and god's road meets together you will be in awe when you see and experience when you establish a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, you can really say with your heart that what He does in all things, it is perfect. In all things, it is well. There is never a time na magkakamali si Jesus in your life. No matter how you would see it na unusual, unexpected, unlikely, you're being overlooked, lahat, lahat na, listen to this, Jesus will never overlook you. Yun yung preaching natin last Sunday. You are never out of God's sight, you're never out of God's care, you're never out of God's provision and protection. Okay? So we're going to look first at the 
condition of the man. Ano yung condition ng tao na to? Why this is unique? Kanina ko pa sinasabi, unique, unique, unique. What is the condition of this man? It is found in verses 31 to 32. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. And they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment and they, be, and they begged him to lay his hand on him. Alright? Politically correct yung ESV. Hindi niya sinabi na mute. Kasi maraming nagpo-protesta niyan eh. No? Na it's very degrading daw na sabihin mo na dump or mute yung tao. So, si ESV rendered this as a person na deaf and had a speech impediment. We're gonna dig deeper in a while. Now, this story begins with Jesus leaving the area of Tyre. You, I hope you're following through. If you have a paperback Bible, na hindi yung free na Bible, yung Bible na medyo may price at nabili mo sa, uh, sa uh, uh, Christian bookstore, Yung matinong Bible, meron yan ng mga maps sa likod. Okay? And you will find there a map na Israel, Palestine in time of Jesus. You follow through. If you have a uh, Bible ngayon, you check that. Pero please do not use Google ngayon. Baka matempt kayo. No? Na in this map of Israel, ang tignan nyo, Okay? Baka map of Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok ang makita niyo. So, post mo na yan. Okay? pag niyo sa bahay, okay, you have a Bible, or check that. Kasi, I've been pointing out that they went through a long, long, very long journey. So, ito yun. It would take them approximately from Galilee going to Tyre. So, Galilee. Eh, basta yung Galilee, yung lake dyan. They went through a horseshoe pattern, direction, route. Parang inverted you. Parang umikot talaga. In the previous sermons, we have seen Jesus Christ traveling on boat, by boat, crisscrossing the place. Madali lang yun. Pero ito, Jesus took a, a horseshoe route from Tyre of Sidon, from Tyre through Sidon, and proceeding the way down to the Sea of Galilee. Alam nyo kung ano kalayo yun? it would take them 120 plus miles. Okay? Baka hindi kayo mahilig sa miles. Let me do the conversion for you. 126 ma- 120, 120 miles is a total of 264 kilometers. Naglakad sila with the disciples. 264 kilometers. And to give you a clearer perspective, it's like walking from Iloilo, from GCF, maglalakad tayong lahat going to Katiklan at magbe-beach doon sa Boracay. Eh? Ganun kalayo, guys! If you're gonna ride it by a private car, siguro for five to, four to five hours. Kung van, na public utility van, siguro six hours. Nilakad nila! Imagine! <laughs> okay? I don't know kung anong mga klase may, ng mga sapatos or sandals meron sila. Uh, but kung ano man sinusuot nila during that time, it worked. Kasi umabot sila sa destination nila. 264 kilometers, not by boat this time, but by walking. Okay, make that a New Year's resolution. Walk like Jesus. 264 kilometers. Ne eh, joke lang. <laughs> okay. So that's five to six hours driving or two days of walking. Jesus traveling or walking into these pagan cities was very intentional in his mission. Yun lamang ang ibig sabihin nun. He was very intentional na talagang may purpose of going there. But at the same time, dual purpose, he wants to train and talk and disciple and teach the disciples. Okay? This is a huge statement. Not to really go that far. This is a huge statement that Jesus was really opening the doors of the gospel of God's kingdom for these pagan and Gentile nations. Probably he passed by the idolatrous practices of these cities. Maybe they passed by, Jesus and the disciples passed by the Greek gods. No? And God says, Zeus. Siguro nakita nila yung mga temples ni Athena. Alright? 
in the midst of this, a group of, sabi ng story natin, is a group of they. Right? Nakita niyo sa verse, they brought a deaf man. Hindi na identify yung they. Probably they were family and friends. They brought a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment. You know, totoong friends. No? Totoong friends, they are going to bring you closer to the Lord. They're going to bring you closer where Jesus is. Hindi yung totoong friend if they're going to pull you away from Jesus. Even if it is inconvenient to lead this deaf and mute person to Jesus, they did anyway. Okay, let us remember that these were thickly populated areas and prospering cities. The ten cities, the capolis. So, yun, umat, nandun na sila. And the people with disabilities like this man, pag meron kang disability, no, they were treated, considered as outcasts. Outcast ka. They were overlooked. I think, I believe this is also the same. No, minsan in our culture, sa mga barabaranggay, no, pagka bulag ka, pagka pilay ka, di ba? Pagka bingi ka, you cannot hear, you cannot speak, parang pinapa, pinapabayaan na. Okay? Buti na lang, merong mga organizations, NGOs, who are taking care of those people. Okay? But they were outcasts during the primitive time, they were overlooked. People believed during their time that if you have this disability from childhood, you're cursed. You are punished by your sins or by the sins of your parents. Kaya ka nagkakaganyan. That's the belief during the, their time. They were also rendered as useless. And if you have a handicap like this, you are thought to have a, an evil spirit inside of you. Parang ganon. But hindi naman sinabi ng Bible. Ang sinabi lang is deaf and a person, a man with a speech impediment. Even in some cultures around the world, the blind, the deaf, and mute are mistreated and overlooked. The least that they can do is to beg for food or money. Yung, yung, yung iba pa nga, ginagawa pang ano to eh, um, sindikato. Diba? They were rendered useless and evil-possessed. This man indeed suffered for a long time from this social and emotional stigma. I don't know. So of course, nakamit na kayo ng deaf and mute na person. Okay? He could not hear. He had a difficulty understanding and being understood by people. Kasi pag nakakita ka ng pilay, nakakita ka ng bulag, alam mo agad na may handicap yung tao. Pero hindi mo malalaman if that person is deaf or mute by just simply looking. Wala namang deaf mute na may ID talaga. Ay, may deaf mute. La. So, minsan na judge mo sila, minsan na titreat, na mimistreat mo sila, only to find out na, ah, sorry, bingi pala. Right? Ito, totoong bingi, ah. Iba yung nagbibingi-bingian. Iba yun. Probably, he was lonely and a nobody in their town. Hindi nga pinababayaan yun, eh. He maybe was also isolated by family for this condition. I hope you can really imagine deeply how this man was deprived of hearing the beauty of sounds. Di ba sa inyo, enjoy niyo yung Spotify, YouTube. Anong gagawin mo sa YouTube kung wala namang sound? Nakamute. I hope you can really imagine with me now. No, this person was deprived of hearing the beauty of the sounds of nature, the sounds of music, sounds of laughter, the sound of, of the words from his siblings, the sound of his mother's words and care. Hindi niya marinig yung mom niya na nagsasabing, I care for you, I love you. Except sa physical touch. And you know what I think? Alam niyo ba kung what is the most debilitating part here? Okay? I think the most debilitating condition here is this. His inability to connect with God. His inability to connect with God. The inability to comprehend that there is a God who loves him. That there is a God who is inviting him into his kingdom. Hindi niya malalaman yun. How could he even decipher the great phenomenon of Jesus visiting this city? All right? From, for, for the first time, how could he even decipher the great phenomenon when Jesus visited this first city and healed the man possessed with thousands of demons? 
How could he even decipher that? Di ba? He cannot form words or sentence in his mind kasi hindi niya nga naririnig eh. Are you following? How lonely, how isolated, how depressing the condition of this person was. And we all, di ba tayo, we all have a huge pity over a person with a mental disability, di ba? Ang tao na may mental disability, naaawa tayo. And, 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 and ako mismo, my heart really goes out for them because of their inability. Their, their mind is broken. They, they are unable to connect with God. And that is painful. Hindi ka makakatok kay God if you are mentally ill. And the same goes on with this person. Yun yung, I believe, the most hard, the hardest part. The inability to connect with God. The verse here would tell us that this was a severe case. Ganun lang, the Bible would tell us a deaf and a mute. But if you're going to, to look deeper, so original language, this was a severe, a serious case. Okay? So hindi lang to simple, you know, bingi lang. Alright? Maybe this happened during childhood or maybe this was very recent. Nevertheless, the man was in the midst of a great and long suffering. But the good news here is that he had faithful friends. He had faithful friends who brought him to Jesus and asked Jesus, and he didn't like how they did this. They begged Jesus to lay his hands upon their friend. Because every time they would see a spiritual leader during the ancient time, every time they would see a rabbi, ganun yung, yung gesture ng person. If you meet a rabbi, a spiritual leader, you would ask that person to lay his hands upon you for blessing, for healing. Ganun yun. That was the condition of the man. The second here that we're going to look at is the communication of Jesus. So, ganun na. Impaired. No? Ang person to hear, to speak. But this is how Jesus communicated. These were the, the symbolic actions, the compassionate symbolic actions of Jesus Christ. In verse 33 together, if you can read the verse, begin, and taking him aside, read with me, from the crowd privately, Okay, I do not see you reading. I must hear you reading. Okay, <laughs> go. And taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his fingers into his ears and after spitting, touched his tongue. Obviously, the man cannot hear. And since he cannot hear, he cannot speak what he doesn't understand or hear. Uh, raise your hand. Meron na ba dito na work with, with a deaf mute? No? Wala pa? Anybody knows how to do sign languages? Wala. Ako meron akong alam. Isa lang. Hi. Yun na. Tapos na. Hi. Now this is how Jesus showed compassion to him by speaking his language through these symbolic actions. Number one, Jesus has taken him privately. Hindi ito madalas ginagawa ni Jesus. Jesus has taken him privately. This man who was overlooked, insignificant, was being given a special treatment and attention by Jesus. Jesus doesn't want tremendous publicity about this specific healing doon sa Gentile country. And we're going to know the explanation later. Let us remember that Jesus was already super famous during this time. Okay? What's the proof? In Mark chapter 5. We have learned that Jesus went here for the first time. He healed a man in the place called Gerasin in the Decapolis and he drove out thousands, legions of demons sa isang lalaki dito. That is thousands of demons possessing him. But Jesus, sabi ng story natin, Jesus has taken him privately. So, by the way, let us take note na when Jesus took this person privately, it doesn't mean na sila lang yung tao dito. Maraming tao dito, sikat na si Jesus. So probably there were thousands, hundreds or thousands of people during this time. And then suddenly a friend brought this person, deaf mute, and then Jesus took him aside privately. Ayaw niya ng publicity. That was the gesture. I don't know. Siyempre, siyempre privately, dalawa lang sila. So inakay niya siguro, denied niya. And siguro, na-amaze yung tao. Hindi niya alam what's happening. Why am I being led away out from the crowd by Jesus? Why is this man holding my hand? Uh, and uh, I saw him heal people publicly. Why am I being taken in a private space? 
This is how Jesus communicated. He ushered, he took this man, maybe by the hand. And number two, Jesus touched his ears. This is how he communicated. Sabi ko nga, confused yung tao eh. He's, he doesn't understand what's happening. He cannot hear. He cannot decipher. So, he was led by Jesus and Jesus, I don't know, pinaupo or nakatayo, Jesus touched his ears. In most of Jesus' healing, we, he would ask an initial response from the person being healed. Follow with me. He would ask the person to come out in faith. Kung nagtatago siya. He would ask the person to come forward. Yung the man with the withered hand. Doon sa sinagog, he asked the man, come forward. Yung leper, ganun din, he went outside. No? From kung saan siya nagtatago. He would ask the person, at times, he would just use his words. Words lang, and people are getting healed. Most of the time, Jesus would touch a person. Nevertheless, if Jesus wants to heal people, they can be healed regardless of what Jesus will do to them or regardless of what people will do to Jesus as an act of faith. There was even a time when a woman suffering from 12 years of blood discharge got healed only by touching the corner of his garment. Ganun lang. You, she was healed. But the healing of this man in the story is so unique because the deaf man could not hear the people around him. He could not hear the instructions no, of his family and friends. And even he could not hear what Jesus is speaking. Kaya Jesus has to do something, a language that he could understand. He touched the per- he, he led the person away, and then he touched his ears, and ito, sabi dito, um, yun yun, he touched his ears. Now, I believe that during this time, no, there was no sign language yet. Wala pang sign language. No, to help these people impaired of hearing. I believe there was no science and professional medicine. Now, I would read mga accounts, stories about dito na pinababayaan sila. Yung mga pinapapatay. Pag bata pa lang, meron ng disability. There was no speech pathologist to help these people, this person. There was no existing technology for people with this kind of disability. But this is how Jesus communicated to the deaf man. And here's how it gets funky here. Listen to this. After touching the man's ears, Jesus spat on the ground, or I don't know, na hindi, tala, hindi naman sa ground, basta sinabi lang, Jesus spits and then touches the tongue of this person. Oops, COVID alert. <laughs> Kids, do not try that at home. Diba? Tana yun. Jesus spit and touched his tongue with the saliva. Ganun yun. He spit with the saliva. Hindi ka pwede mag-spit na walang saliva. Na you spit saliva-less. No, with saliva talaga yun. Alright? He took, Jesus took him off alone, away from the crowd, by himself. Imagine the scenario here. Puts his finger into his, to, to, to this man's ears. And after spitting, Jesus touched his tongue with the saliva. And this is, you know what? As I was reading this, this is exactly opposite as to how modern-day faith healers or fake healers would heal people. Gusto nila in public, okay? Gusto nila with, with, uh, with, 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 with audience or kung ano pang mga tricks. These pseudo-healers no, would do this thing sa mga people, per- person with a disease or handicap. They would ask the person to do something, say something, take something in public before get, getting healed. What Jesus did here was so unique that this deaf and mute man need to understand that Jesus has the power over the ability to hear and the ability to speak. He touches his ears because he cannot hear. He touches his tongue because he cannot speak. And by the way, walang audience, ha? private ito. And you know what fascinated me more with this miracle? Why did Jesus have to do all these things? Bakit kailangan pa? Lead him away, touch the ears, touch the tongue. Bakit kailangan pa yun? Okay? Na-fascinate talaga ako nito. Why did Jesus have to do all these things when He can heal people simply by saying a word? Saying a word. 
He can see people exactly where they are. He can hear. He can even feel and, and for sure heal people from a distance. But why bother to do these things to this man? Remember, the man cannot hear, and since he cannot hear, he is neither able to understand the word nor form a sentence in his mind. He cannot even lip-read. Makakapag-lip-read ka lang kung marunong ka na ng words, kung naiintindihan mo na. Because this person cannot understand anything. Alam niyo, inisip ko, Jesus could have talked to this person mind to mind. Parang si Professor X, di ba? Kausapin mo yung tao, mind to mind, mind to mind. Pero bakit kailangan pa itong mga bagay na to? Right? You know what? He made these outward signs, sign languages, to effectively relate, to effectively communicate that he loves this person so much, no matter how he was overlooked, insignificant, kailangan niyang gawin ito. To let and to tell this person that I know you suffered for a long time, you were lonely for a long time, a lot of people do not understand you, but I am here for you. I am already here for you. Just you and me. I'm touching your ears. I'm touching your tongue. Walang audience. Tayo lang. I am here. I am paying attention. I am here just for you. I have time for you. There's so many crowds here, but I am not in a hurry. That's the point. He was in a serious attention to this deaf and mute. Siguro talagang naawa siya. This is how compassionate Jesus was to this person. Pwede lang naman paggalingan, okay, ang layo mo, one kilometer away ka, okay, sige. Or yung family and friends could have said, heal this person, hindi siya makalabas, kasi nagwa-wild, deaf and mute. Okay, what's the name? Pwedeng gawin yun, di ba? Or nung lumapit, Hindi niya nasanay hinawakan or kinausap niya mind to mind. But no, he has to do these things. He has to touch this person. He was not in a hurry. He was totally paying attention. Jesus was willing to heal this person. And this person was healed right then and there. This is what Jesus had to do in order to help this man trust in him as Savior and healer. Yun yung ayaw ni Jesus Christ. Now when you get healed, you will quickly disappear. Kagaya ng ginawa niya doon sa the man with an issue of blood. Ayaw niyang umalis sila na thinking na it was just the rituals. It was just the, the, the spit. It was just the garment. Gusto ni Jesus Christ, maintindihan nila na it was their faith. Maraming beses, your faith has healed you. Your faith has forgiven you. That was the mission of Jesus Christ to set these people free from this spiritual bondage. Actually, yung rendering ng verse na when this man was able to talk, parang yung original language is the chains were removed. Ganun yung original. Parang hindi siya nakakapagsirata because there were chains, um, figuratively speaking. Jesus has to set this free. That was the condition of the man. That is how Jesus communicated to this man. The third is we are going to look at the compassion. The compassion. Compassion na yun. Oh, already compassion, doing those things. Pero this is how Jesus really communicated the compassion. In verse 34, together read with me. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephata, that is, be opened. Ephata, can you say that with me? Ephata, go. Ephata. It's an Aramaic word. That was, that was their language, their dialect. In this place, ang ibig sabihin lang noon, he commanded this man, be opened. Dalawang bagay dito where we can see that Jesus was compassionate to this man. He sighed, Jesus sighed, and Jesus spoke. Ano itong sighed? He looked up to heaven because Jesus here was imploring the help of God the Father. He wants to let this man know that the healing came from God, hindi doon sa saliva. Hindi doon sa, sa act of, of, of this person coming to Jesus. But it was the total act of God. This miracle was an only God thing. Yun yung ibig sabihin nun. Jesus, Jesus sighed. Okay? Ay, iba sabi, Jesus groaned. Oh, yung sighed pala, para it's a, 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 Sa sobrang awa. Ganun yung, yung language. That is how Jesus reacted when he was doing these things. He sighed. 
Alam mo niyo pa na magsay? No? Pinaasa ka na may sweldo tapos wala pala. Hay. <sighs> Or akala niyo kayo, hindi pala kayo. Hay. <sighs> Pero to, he sighed out of pity, out of compassion. Tandaan niyo ha, dalawa lang sila. Out of the thousands of people here, he took this person privately. And when he was looking at the eyes, when he was touching the ears, when he was touching the tongue of this person, talagang sobrang nawa, he sighed and he looked at the heaven. It's like he was praying, Father, heal this person. Father, help this person. That was the compassion of Jesus. And Jesus spoke the word to this man, Ephata. This is an Aramaic language. The people of their time spoke a language na hindi niya never niyang naintindihan, never niyang maiintindihan kung, you know, if sarado pa yun. Pero sabi ni Jesus, Ephata. And this is what happened in verse 35, the cure, together. And his ears were opened, his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Look at that carefully. His ears were open. His tongue was released. Yung word na released, it was like there was a shackle. There were chains in his mouth, in his tongue. It was released by Jesus Christ. This is how powerful Jesus Christ as to how he healed this person. His ears were open. No? Yung ibang translations would render this. His ears were instantly opened. Open. He was healed instantly. His tongue was released. And I like the word there. And he spoke plainly. Walang speech pathologist na tumulong. There was no speech recovery phase here. Automatic. When Jesus healed this, this was spectacular. He doesn't know language before, pero ito, he can speak plainly. Wow! <sighs> Miracle indeed. God does all things well. And you know why he does all things well? Dalawang beses lang ginamit yung, yung word dyan. But yung verse na to was also referred in the book of Isaiah. When the time will come, when Jesus Christ will redeem his people, alright, every mute will speak, every deaf will hear, every lame will walk. Pagdating doon, when the time of Jesus Christ will come and redeem His people. That was the cure. He spoke plainly. Amazing, di ba? Amazing. Hindi na nag-practice pa. Nakikita niyo ngayon sa TV as to how the pseudo-faith healers would do healings. Okay, itas mong kamay mo. Ba, pilay. O sige, lumakad ka ng konti. <laughs> Masakit pa ba? Masakit pa ba? O, try mo to. Try mo. Ito, ito, instant. He spoke plainly. As if nakakapagsalita siya before. So these were new set. When, the, when Jesus does something, when God does something in your life, He does all things perfectly. He does all things well. And He does all things in perfect creation. Diba when Jesus saved you? 2 Corinthians 5.17 All things are gone away. Behold, all things have become new. When Jesus does things, in your life, He does it perfectly. He does it well. And guys, look at this. Imagine with me, hindi ito inexpect. Hindi ito inexpect ng deaf and mute person. Na ito yung mangyayari kasi niya. Kasi he was totally clueless. He was being led away privately. Jesus touched his ears. Jesus touched his tongue. And as we close, in verse 35, here is the command. Here's the charge. Palagi yun eh. Every time Jesus would do something, miracle, He would charge this person. Verse 36 and 37, as we close, begin, and Jesus charged them to tell no one, but the more He charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. Sabi ni Jesus Christ, do not tell no one. 37, and they were astonished beyond measure, saying He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. In Mark chapter 5, we have learned that Jesus went here for the first time, right? Healing the person, no? The possessed with legions of demons. He healed the man possessed by thousands of evil spirits. Gusto kong basahin yan sa inyo kasi I would like you to know the difference here as to why Jesus commanded this deaf-mute person not to tell anybody, pero the man possessed with 
demons, with legions of demons, why he commanded that person to tell the people around. Why is that? Huh? Is there a disparity? Huh? And by the way, guys, why would Jesus tell these things sa tao na to, when all of his life, he cannot hear, he cannot speak, and the moment na he can already speak, and he only had one message to tell the world, he was not allowed to speak. If that were you, no? kung ikaw yun, yung deaf mute, will you do that? Lord, ito lang yung story ko. This is my first story ko sa Facebook stories pa. Ito yung magiging first story ko. Ito yung magiging first status ko, Lord. And you're not telling me not to post. Diba? You were in a very good party. You went beautiful places. Memorable time. And then sasabihin ng lahat, Okay guys, let's agree on this. Do not post. What? This is my first time to visit this place. This is my first time to meet this person, this celebrity. And you're telling me not to post? Ganun yung sinabi. Do not tell. Now here's the difference. Mark 5, 17 to 20, Jesus healing the person possessed with legions of demons. And they began to beg Jesus to depart from the region. Kasi nga, when Jesus healed this person, these thousands of, of demons went to the pigs. And the pigs, the herds of pigs, no, threw themselves out into the cliff. And ito yung mga tao, kasi basically, ito yung hanap buhay nila, maraming tao, they began to beg Jesus to depart from their region. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been, who had been possessed with demons begged him that he might be with him. Verse 19, Mark 5, 19, And he did not permit him, but said to him, Wagan sumama sa boat na to. We're going back to Galilee, but do not go with us. Go home to your friends and tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how much he has had mercy on you. Go home, tell the people. Go home and share this message. This demon-possessed man, he was healed and he became the first evangelist in the ten cities. Right? And why would Jesus tell this person not to tell anybody? You know what's the reason here? The story is not yet complete. It's not yet time. When the demon-possessed man was healed, he became the first evangelist. Jesus told him to tell everybody because that was the first exposure of the gospel. And then the phenomenon, the news was already there. It was already famous. And the proof of that is that right after the story, next Sunday, that's the sermon, he was going to feed 4,000 people. And you have to multiply that, right? Into three or four. There were people from this region, thousands flocking to Jesus. So talagang sikat na siya during this time. But the, the, the job must be done by that first person, the first evangelist. Pero itong deaf mute man, sabi ni Jesus, do not tell. Why? Because it's not yet time. Why? Kasi right after Jesus does the, heal, the feeding of the 5,000, people want, wanted to make him a king, a military king. And people were already looking to kill him. Hindi patapos yung mission niya. He has to die first, he has to be buried, and he has to be resurrected and to complete the story. Right after that, pwede na. That's the point. That's the reason why Jesus told this person, do not tell anybody. Pero naawa talaga ako eh. Sobrang naawa ako when I was studying this, this person. You're able to talk, <laughs> but you're not able to, but you're told not to talk. Pwede ba yun? O, parang naka-recover ka na, na lumakad, pero sinabi siya, huwag lumakad. Do not go somewhere else. <laughs> Alright? I remember my wife when she had an injury. She broke her leg. Hindi pa total recovery. No? But she was already going somewhere else. Alright? The stores, the markets are calling. And she has to go. <laughs> Pero ito, this was very brand new speech. Brand new tongue. Brand new ears. Indeed, nung nakita nila ito, indeed, God has done all things well. Yung word na well is perfectly. God has done completely, hindi installment. Wala nang recovery phase. Automatic, Jesus heals this person. You know what? As I close, we might not be the same. We, we, we might not experience the same thing with this deaf person. But there are ways 
there are situations where we are unable to hear God speak. I don't know for what reason, but people are just stubborn to the truth. And people would doubt the ways, the will of God in their lives. Kasi sabi nila, I don't, you know, just like this deaf person, what if yung person na to nagpanic? Ayaw niyang sumama kay Jesus. He was being taken away in private. Pero what if? Nagpanic siya. No, no, I don't want to go. And then, paano niya interpret yun sa friends and family niya? There are times when we are like that. We cannot understand the will, the ways of God. But look at this. When we submit totally to His ways, when we surrender everything to the Lord, He does all things well, completely, perfectly in your life. No matter how overlooked you are, you think you are uh, forgotten, forsaken, ito yun. Jesus does something well with your life. And if you're listening online, or maybe some of you here, you're not yet sure of your salvation. Pwedeng hindi ka naman deaf physically, mute physically, but sometimes, ito yung disease natin na malaki. We hear God speak. We are able to hear God speak, but we do not trust His words. Matagal mo nang narinig ito, na one day, there will be an end to all of this. One day, we will all die. Matagal mo na narinig ito. Someday, this body will die. Someday, this heart will stop beating, but that is not going to be the end of it. Merong second destination. May merong dalawang destination. It's either heaven or hell. If you do not know Jesus Christ yet, you have to trust Him personally as your Lord, as your Savior. Faith like this. Not do not trust in your religion. Do not trust in your good works. Trust in what Jesus has done on the cross. Perfectly. Perfectly. He has finished everything that you and I need to pay. Sabi doon, when Jesus was hanging on the tree, before He gave up His Spirit, sabi doon, it is finished. Ano yung finished? It is finished. Tapos na ang pagbayad ng mga kasalanan. It is finished. This is the final and perfect Sacrifice. If you believe him, sabi ng John 3.16, for God's all of the world, that he gave his life, and that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But God, Romans 5.8, God demonstrated his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. If you'll trust him now, God is willing, God is able to save you. Father in heaven, thank you for your word. We ask and pray. That we are not going to become stubborn to the truth. We ask and pray that if you are speaking into our hearts right now, if we are not yet sure of our salvation, we fear death, we are not yet sure of our eternal destiny, we have heard the good news, the gospel, that only Jesus saves. He died on the cross to pay for our sins. He was buried on the third day. He rose again victoriously because He is God. He conquered sin, death, and hell. Father in heaven, here is my life. This is my prayer. If you're speaking into my heart, Jesus, I know I can hear you well. Here's my life. I now trust you as my Lord and as my Savior. Save me now. I do not want to go to hell. Save me now. I cannot be saved from my religion, from doing good works because I am a sinner. I repent from all of my sins. Forgive me. Here's my life. Save me now. And Father, I continue to pray for your children. Continue to guide them into your truth. That this year is going to be a year where we will be keen in listening to your word. That we would be obedient followers of your word. You have spoken. You are always speaking. Father, we don't want to become stubborn to the truth. Cause us to grow and be obedient to your word. Bless your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Was that for his word? Shall we all stand in response? Let's sing.
Heavenly Father, we are grateful for this time of worship. We are grateful for this place of worship, Lord, that you have allowed us once more that your name be glorified, your name be lifted up in our singing, in the preaching of your word. And Lord, we pray that your, your message will not be in vain in us and even, Lord, to the online community, the online family that we have. Lord, indeed, it is a daily miracle, even in this trying time, Lord, that we are still here. So, Lord, even in the little things, we ask and pray that we can recognize you. We can still give thanks. And, Lord, we can still honor, trust, and worship you, Lord. Lord, indeed, it is this Lord really a longing for us to be gathered as a church to feel the fellowship the presence of each one and Lord as long as we have this opportunity Lord may we not neglect this and Lord may we always cherish this time may we value Lord this time that Lord we can still have we can give sacrificially our time our efforts and Lord we can be here be taught be rebuked to be filled Lord with your with your Holy Spirit with your message so Lord may it has spoken to us and Lord may it has given us inspiration strength Give us, Lord, encouragement and acknowledgement, Lord, that you are the God who oversees, who is sovereign always in everything in this world, even in our personal lives. So, Lord, may it give us a heart, Lord, that always is humble, always, Lord, seeking, always surrender, Lord, upon you. And, Lord, may your message be will not end in us. May it also, Lord, push us to share this to others who are also in need of your word, in need of your salvation, in need of your hope. May we become a source of miracle, Lord, to others as well. Even as we leave this church, Lord, we pray for the other GCFers who are not able to attend. For those, Lord, who are sick, Lord, we pray that you heal them. For the people, for our, fam for our faith family who are grieving, Lord, because of a loss of a loved one, we pray for your comfort for them, for church and this family. Lord, may be with them. And Lord, we pray that your message also will be clearly preached later today at 5 p.m. We are all in community still. Even, Lord, in our churches planted in Rojas, in Iwamailan, may you bless them, Lord. So, Lord, be with us today. And, Lord, may your name be glorified. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, everyone.